systematic search and ontology enabled um, applications. Now, we, in the last class, we talked about uh, you know sort of the phase one. Uh, the term semantic web was introduced in 1999, and I talked to you about some of the work that, uh, largely the one that I had done and the company that I founded done in um, uh, 1998 to uh, this kind of time frame. Uh, now, um, and, and we did have some um, discussion about uh, what you see today in uh, search engines. Um, what is one takeaway uh, from uh, you know this particular presentation? Or uh, you know, this basically there's a technical report, there is a keynote in two thousand three, and there is a publication that discusses. So, what is one takeaway from that? particular How entities are related in real world is what matters more than just plain string matching. So when you query something, instead of looking at the query as a, as a string, we should look at what the context, what entities are the, is the user searching for and what is the context in which the entities are being searched for. Okay. without the, the need to understand the importance of relationships and then when you capture and extract relationships from the document or in the triple format or from the between the entities the meaning is uh, if you take out the relationship part the context and the meaning is no longer there in the triple or in between any entity so if you understand relationship then you can compute Path containing a path between two entities, and then if it is for a triple, then if you understand the meaning of the relationship, the the, the meaning that the user who modeled the triple try to convey, so the machine can understand, and then you can be build better application. So it, the importance of identifying the relationships, and then basically extracting. example in 2004 this paper which you were and I think it went more deeply to relationship compared to 2008 which it was T uh, and it's more uh, focused on a metadata which uh, introduces uh, means like a uh, entity and somehow entities and things changes changes uh, change to the relationships I think uh, this 2004 Well, let's 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 just sort of focus on what what am I trying to convey with this particular abstract? Right? This was abstract for my talk, am I right? So, what am I trying to convey? What what is how would you describe what I was what I talked about here? It's about uh, the relationships which are defined as simple and complex, mm -hmm. and in complex relationships, uh, these are uh, either validated, understood then exploit it, how the relationships are, are done this way. And from data, how we just acquire the prior knowledge and or other information uh, uh, which are got from the data. And in detail, uh, you discuss about the uh, things which are required for query processing and uh, 
some 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 other stuff like uh, you said about row factor multi ontology which is query processing for query processing i think i think uh, you you're getting lost in the woods in the forest but have provided initial taxonomy for uh, semantic relationship no it is let's read this sentence <coughs> this is the first two sentences and this make sure that we got what right. so this i'm saying in 2003 presentation right uh, so about decade ago right so it's you know during the last decade emphasis has been on finding relevant documents or content an objective which most of the today search and browsing techniques address right so we had google we had page rank we had other search engines and when you in those days when you search for something you get those blue links and the uh, little descriptions uh, from the uh, textual uh, snippet uh, from the document itself nothing more there's no summarization there's no interpretation uh, but it was a smart way to find the document that mentioned the terms you use in your query as best as possible and then here i am saying we believe during the next decade the emphasis will shift from documents and entities to relationships <coughs> that of discovering or validating contextually relevant meaningful and possibly complex relationship amongst the entities the document mentioned and described so uh, when you uh, there was um, when you see here relationships at the heart of semantic web semantics and semantic web uh, the meaning embodied in the document essentially comes from the relationships that um, if you understand that document has the word car uh, in the string car c a r that doesn't tell you a whole lot a little bit a better thing is that you say the document has uh, entity car when you say entity car it implies you understand car as a concept which would mean that in alternative usage of that term say automobile would be known to the system as uh, something that is um, synonym right so this understanding this not just car uh, as in text car but that is it's an object entity right thing uh, uh, that is out there in the world and with that comes the implication that the system understands that car is probably the same as automobile that they are synonym right that is fine and so that is that's an improvement you understand that improvement right i mean it, it implies that you um search for automobile if the document had car it will the system still understands it is relevant that that document is relevant right you understand that right yeah. but you still not know the context in which the car is being talked about you would not know whether it's a car manual you would not know whether it's advertisement for car you won't know uh, that is a news item about car crash in a nearby location right there are many things uh, about car that you would not know about right to know about that you fundamentally require relationships right because a uh, car as in um uh, specification of the car car as uh, and, and its manual then we you always talking about car related to another of you know concept called manual car related to another concept called specification car car related to another concept like say you know advertisement car is another concept called uh, you know uh, accident and there is a relation between them right 
So you are going to have to to get to the next level. The context in which car is being talked about, you have to basically model and understand relationships. Understand that fundamental thing, right? Have we reached that level of sophisticated at least in our search engines? graph might be a, a start of that like the knowledge vault it seems like this is the, the part of a precursor maybe to when where knowledge vault is going right that's mm -hmm. that is where um, uh, the things are going it has not yet quite made it but that thing is clearly going so if you uh, let's look at this here uh, there is a um, uh, interview with Amit Singer Right? Yeah. I don't remember now, uh, but um, I had read uh, uh, one of the interviews uh, that um, uh, so so you see here. Singer says, begun to learn how to understand the real world of people, places, and things. Right? Mm -hmm. So, I think one of the early things that they all start to do is um, um, to understand these entities. Mm -hmm. And perhaps what type these entities are. Right? Not yet relationship per se. But if you are doing search and um, uh, uh, you would get, when you do search, you will get on the right hand side custom box. That means you, the system has displayed an understanding that this thing that you, there is in your query term there exists an entity mm -hmm. and look this is what I know about entity right so in you know in, in my time this is what happened right you asked something about holiday, the album that Madonna had, and you got information about that article, uh, that, that particular record. Right? And it is very really important here that there are a lot of things that are happening actually in this system, actually it was more advanced than what you see even today because the system would say, hey, you asked for Madonna, I'll give you Madonna. If you ask for album, if I have information about album, I'll give you. If not, I know that this album is by this, you know, artist, and I'll give you information about the artist. That is, I can't give you exactly what you ask for, but I know it is related to, you know, I, I know something that is related to what you ask for. So I'll give you that. So that ranking scheme actually was used in the middle for giving you the most uh, relevant item. Because the system not only was working on the entities, but also had relationships already. And he was looking for which relationship, which also could, you know, loosely call context, is most most likely to be of interest to the user. And the system uh, worked in multiple ways. One is that actually user would tell that I'm interested in um, music context or movie context. Madonna has been artist, uh, you know, has been, uh, you know, she has also been an actress, uh, as well as, uh, you know, in, was well known uh, record artist. So it will say that um, you know I, I'll exploit and give you the you know other documents that are reachable through the, those relationship. Yeah. Now the interesting thing about uh, this page is that it is actually dynamically created yeah. from the metadata. Right? <coughs> um, and to what extent the content displayed in say Google custom boxes 
already there and simply a snapshot of what is uh, already in the knowledge graph versus that being created for that particular query is not clear to me yet. And I'm sure, you know, you know, the search engines like Google, you know, they literally make hundreds of changes every year. So it's a you know, moving target. I can't, you know, at one point I may know something about it and they may uh, come up with new solutions. So this, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a great company. So there's, you know, things are going to keep on moving. But coming to that thing here, let's see if um, this one, because I had, um, see, he talks about relationships here. Although there is only one term relationship here, there is another um, uh, um, this does not really go into that. There is another um, 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 let me see uh, there is another article where I think he talked a little more about relationship uh, let me see uh, in this one here. So, you know, here I'm talking about, let's see if I can know this, contextual or relationship information. Right there. Um, I think you need to get rid of the ad. Hmm? The ad at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, how do you get rid of that? There was an X in the upper right corner, which is now sort of hidden behind. Yeah, these guys. Uh, I should not search. Huh? Control search. Yeah. Uh, that is the same. That was the same thing. Okay. As you'll see, there'll be. Uh, a few uh, description of relationships um, in the document, um, and then there are others anyway. Let's let's go on from here. So, um, so I, so so it is very clear that um, they are going towards relationships, um, and and I think there is lot better handle on entity as of now, right? Um, so here, um, you know, um, you might have seen this discussion here, right? Um, let me, uh, the other thing, that I was talking about there, uh, which is not going to be that easy to achieve in any near term, is those the things about complex relationship. So I think we are still at a stage where some simple relationships are um, being investigated. And, and, and initially the thought was 
um, and by the search engine from what I read, uh, so let's focus on people, place, and things, whatever that means, right? What are things, things, a lot of things. Uh, and then there will be certain type of relationships. Uh, one of the ways that um, they are, uh, they have clearly gone towards semantic web is the use of schema.org that they have all adopted, mm -hmm. right? All search engines practically use that. And here what is happening? Just the same way uh, that um, uh, page rank tapped into the strength of you know link links that others have provided. So using the um, you know social uh, leveraging what's there provided by others. And earlier, some search engines also uh, encourage people to use meta. Uh, tags to provide metadata that is not displayed but is you know in there. Then they realize that everybody was giving, uh, trying to bias the results. So the quality of metadata coming using metadata was very bad. Uh, people just wanted the results show up so that they can monetize the display. And so they had to cut down on and basically they basically now don't use meta tags. But in the same principle now, there's schema.org and um, you're asking people, the content providers, to provide metadata. Now, what is happening here, though, is that in the schema.org context, you know, if you look at who is controlling that, and in fact, uh, Guha, and I have the link to Guha, an interview to, with Guha, right, there in schema or He's leading that effort, right? And, uh, um, um, and I mentioned to you, Guha had, uh, I, I don't know whether I mentioned to you or not, but um, just as um, Gruber had talked about ontology in 1991 report, uh, Guha worked on something called MCF, uh, which is, was the precursor to RDF. So clearly, um, one of the few people I would really credit with who understood the importance of relationships. I also have a number of articles in 90s that talk about relationships. But you know, Guha clearly understood its importance, and he had, you know, also the main, you know, was there in the early, very early phase of uh, essentially the definition of RDF. So. Uh, is well recognized that RDF is largely influenced by the work that he did with this MCF thing, right? And the fundamental thing about RDF is the link, you know, as the first class object, right? Link or relationship as the first class object. So what happened here? That suppose you are, um, and this is a fundamental thing to understand. You're a search engine, you're trying to understand document. But you have to represent what you understood in some form, right? You have to have, you crawl the data, you pass the text, found the entities, did all the stuff you needed to. But then at the end of the day, if you want to go from keywords or strings to things or entities, Two relationships, you will have to have some internal representation that your search engine uses that will represent that, that level of information, the link information, the relationship information, right? In early days, that was not the case. If you done information retrieval, right? So you, what, what do you get? What do you store? If the fundamental, the most important concept in IR is, is what? Keywords. Hmm? Keywords and the things. Yes, but what about, what, what statistics? Relevance scores. Relevance scores. Yeah. With TFIDF. TFIDF, yeah. That's, that's uh, most often and primarily concept, right? Mm -hmm. That doesn't capture concept of relationship. There was another um, uh, interesting um, 
progress. I was I used to work at Bell Communication Research um, in the early 90s, and um, I had a colleague, uh, Susan Dume, um, and um, uh, she and her colleagues um, came up, you know, developed this something called latent semantic indexing. Now, latent semantic indexing became, you know, so what, what it is is that to compute cosine between a vector created by the terms that occur in the document. Okay. So in, in principle, then it gives you some level of ability to recognize that this document has a lot of occurrence of word car, this document has a lot of occurrence of word automobile, but a lot of other words are the same. When that kind of situation occurs, you'll find that in those vectors that they created, car and automobiles, uh, you know, were close by. Or at, you know, the you know, and, and in fact, when you look for relevance of the documents, documents with car and uh, automobile will come by, come, come, come close by. Hence, in theory or in practice, to some level, to some level, at some ex, um, uh, level, when you look for car, you can get in the search engine automobile because the documents uh, that also had automobile, not car, had similar, you know, uh, signature, similar vector, and then uh, the thing will come very close in concept, and hence you can rank that higher. Yet, that information is not explicitly available. You understand? That's a very important thing to recognize. The PhD student should uh, look, up, look at the paper on semantics for the semantic web. The implicit, the formal, the powerful. Right? Where, where I describe, um, you know, this particular issue as to when you use IR techniques, when you use um, uh, machine learning techniques, you get the implicit semantics, but you don't get concrete, the formal semantics. Explicit representation that car and automobile are the same. Right? <clears throat> How do you get to that? There are many, many things. That actually was in part um, related to um, this debate that I had, or this, you know, there's no direct debate, really, it's, uh, you know, uh, there's a post and I responded at this post, right? So, this post, a post by uh, Peter Norwin, Semantic Web Ontologies, uh, what works and what doesn't. And uh, my response, uh, a different perspective on what works and what doesn't, right? So there you could see the thing being covered, uh, colored rather, by these things. Because until then, and in fact sometime later on, uh, you know, search engines like Google, particularly Google in particular, were huge proponents of machine learning. And only machine learning for that matter. I think, I think machine learning is extremely important, very crucial. They've shown the value, no doubt about it. But when you do the same you know, intuition I try to share with you with regards to LSI and IR technique and the explicit representation where I have it on the model, in the ontology, in the background knowledge, in the domain model, whatever we call it, where I could explicitly say car equal to automobile or car is almost the same as automobile, whatever I want to say, I can say that, right? That same thing essentially uh, shows up because what happens, so, so, so you use machine learning, once again, um, you, it's, it's, it's basically statistics based, right? So it's not something that's going to give uh, an explicit representation of the concepts as one would have it in the knowledge representation, as in ontology. Right? So, um, 
And then you would say, and you know, so Peter Norwick's viewpoint is that you know, Google serves, you know, Google scope is entire web. How, I don't think you can create an ontology for the entire web. He had also observed correctly that uh, ontology development processes have, you know, they require ontological engineering. So it's like others sitting down and trying to design ontology or she was sitting down designing ontology for some other some domain and it takes time. And uh, in technologies like ontology ex engineer or knowledge engineer does not have the knowledge of the domain. So you have to talk to the domain expert. So we had built handcrafted ontologies. Uh, there was an ontology called Propio that um, uh, the guy who was just uh, you know contacting with me, I am right now. He's a he's a professor at uh, State Case Western University. He Satya, he was the one. He spent uh, two to three years sitting next to a biochemist who um, gave the knowledge for Satya to design an ontology called Propio, which had 500 classes. It was 11 to 13 level deep ontology. Okay. It captured all the things, that we, a lot of things related to proteomics and, and the machines like mass spectroscopy who would um, analyze uh, biomaterial to find the uh, presence of various proteins. So, um, or signatures that implicate uh, uh, certain proteins. So, um, so Peter was right in to, to, uh, to some extent kind of right, or I understand where you would come from, saying, you know, it takes a very long time. He also had, uh, I don't know whether he noticed that or not, but people disagree. Uh, you talk to two different experts in the same domain, they not exactly agree also. So there are, there are a number of challenges that, uh, that w w why he said, you can't develop ontology for search engine like Google, more or less. Yeah, it's something somewhat more nuanced, but that's kind of stuff he what he said, and so he was poo pooing the idea that ontologies uh, can help search. Right, that is basically what the thing was about. Right, anything anybody wants to add anything to that? Yeah, so, so uh, you know, I would basically say that, I mean, when you know, people come from different communities and are not willing to, uh, you know, reach out to other community or believe, you know, or say that my own community things are the best, um, then, then sometimes you miss out on, uh, you know, what others can do. Uh, but nevertheless, um, when CG talks about, by the way, um, this chicken and egg problem, right? Um, it so happens, for example, that um, uh, one of the students who wrote the paper jointly with me on uh, this uh, semantics, the uh, implicit, the formal, powerful, Kartik, uh, Ramakrishnan, and another of my students, Vipul Kashyap, uh, they had worked on um, extracting taxonomy out of corpus of documents. Okay, so automatically creating taxonomy. And others had done that. I'm sure um, somebody like Peter would know about those kind of stuff. Now, um, so what is the chicken and egg problem? Anybody wants to discuss that? He's saying about the point of getting the tools for the information, unless, uh, I mean, the information has a tool, I mean, to get the tool, I mean, using the tools. It's something like, uh, I mean, what is the use of getting the tools for the information and uh, what is the use of getting the information to use these tools? Anybody else wants to? Well, he's saying you can't create an ontology without actually having an ontology to, to create it with because you already you have to have the concepts of what the objects are before you can assign relationships to them. 
Right, you have to know what information you're going to create the anthology with to create the anthology. Otherwise, how are you going to create the anthology if you don't know what information you will get? You could create an anthology that when you go and use it, it doesn't actually amount to anything because you're not collecting the right kind of data to fit that ontology. Yeah. So, so how do you address that? Hmm? You do it for specific applications. Domains. Yeah. Domains. Just like Amit Singer, also from Google, uh, said, you, they started with people, places, places, people, and things, right? Yeah. They started there. What did Tali do? News. Yes. Is it fundamentally different from schema.org? No, but the scale's different and the breadth of domains are different. The other thing is that I think it's kind of cheating the way that schema.org has, not, not in a bad way, but, but cheating in that they're requiring, they're, like you did it in 2000 without any structured data. Now in 2014 we're doing it, but webmasters have to supply structured data. That seems so, I, I, I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, it'll come, it'll come. The pace will come, uh, you know, uh, it'll take slowly. Um, uh, I, people can argue that, hey, we did something and uh, uh, we did it, uh, uh, it could not necessarily, it would scale to the whole web. I think it could and I think uh, I, I can very clearly show the scalability argument and uh, to large le level scalability was done. So, but basically what we did, the coming back to this chicken egg problem and such is that you describe, you, you take a domain and f you describe what are interesting things within that domain. Rather than just calling people, place and things, we said, we're going to say if you are on entertainment domain, in that we are interested in music, we are interested in um, movies, we are interested in something else. Then let's say we are going to, let's talk about Music, for music we are interested in uh, music artists, uh, we are interested in record label, we are interested in tracks, we are interested in genre, X, Y, Z, right? And um, um, so that was the first thing to be done, really, to break the chicken and egg problem. There's another very crucial piece that we figured out then. What is that? You've not been saying anything, so I hope you read things. Yeah. Okay. What is the second thing we figured out? <coughs> we have created uh, from the relational metadata. Uh, we have started semantic web uh, search engine, including digital media? No, uh, I mean you're getting very broad. Um, basically, my, um, again, let me define my question. So, first thing we did was to define the schema that describe what I'm interested in with regards to a domain of interest. Let's say music. And I just describe what I might be interested in. What is the next thing to be done? Then you went to domain sites, so you'd go to NFL if you were doing a sports team, or you would go to some uh, music-related website. So you would scrape appropriate sites for the appropriate data that you were looking for. Right. So uh, from technical perspective, what is that? Identify the knowledge base. Right. So, but the fundamentally, what I have said much earlier when we were doing ontology design related discussion is that you have a schema level information and you have facts. <coughs> description and description base or instances is, you know, right? So you say I have concept of artist and then you have instance of artist Moderna, right? So the power, and if you look at some of the writings that I've done, you know, schema is, fine, is, is necessary to score, but the power comes from the facts, knowledge of facts. That titanium has weight 94, or Moderna is an artist and she is a pop artist, or actually she has been art different genre over a different period of time. <coughs> Those facts, right? Now, look what happened. So I mentioned that 
as an example. Is that okay? Example included for music on music.com. Nowadays, music uh, brains. Look at what music brains has. This site has changed since I last, last <laughs> saw that. But it basically has um, uh, information and it used to be totally open. I don't know whether it says products, so I don't know. Uh, data under open license. Okay. All right, that's good. So, um, it basically, if you look at here, it, last time I saw, uh, that was, it had well over, somewhere pretty close to 600,000 artists. Well, yeah, but the number of artists that you have, uh, there were uh, 600,000 or so. Tells you how comprehensive this stuff is. And this is managed again. It's like Wikipedia. It's a community of one. Right? So, one of the largest today, many, uh, you know, um, take example of IBM, uh, Watson and the version they had used for Jeopardy um, they, if you look at the uh, video of Chris uh, Christopher Wetley, uh, Welty who had come here and given a talk and we have a copy of that in our noises video on YouTube uh, he talks about the importance of background knowledge and DBpedia being one of them right if I um, um, So, if I want music, basically, practically everything that I'm interested in, as in terms of facts, associated with the music that I can use as my knowledge base, is there. Sometimes everything is not at that one site. So I take uh, football, then I have professional football. I come from one, get one, from one site, but for college football, I may have to go to multiple websites, multiple websites for each of the team thing because they may not be considered a site. But then you also have to know if you're talking about American football or English football, which is oh, a sure. more complicated problem. Sure. That those are there. The disambiguation problem is one of the most challenging problems when you deal with semantics. Okay. But the point here is that in many, many, many cases, let me say that not all, but in many cases, I can tell you about, uh, yes, there's another very interesting example. We had created a semantic um, uh, version of electronic medical record. That means in electronic medical record where you know doctors are, you know, or when you go to hospital, if you are in hospital, uh, hospital or you go to doctor's office, all these doctor notes are there, right? And they go into electronic system. It's called electronic medical record system. And now we call it personalized health records. That you know, uh, uh, Microsoft had it and has it, and uh, uh, Google had it, but gave up and. Uh, Apple has come up with something like that. Um, there will be concept of pharmaceutical drug. Uh, well, then there is a database available which lists every drug available and for sale in the market. Right? So we took uh, data. Now, in some cases, the data is open in public and is under open license. In other cases, data is not necessarily fully public. And you might have to pay them $10,000 or give, uh, just the same way if you want to get Twitter uh, feed other than that uh, you know, public feed, uh, you have to pay them. The same way you have to pay uh, somebody else if you don't want to do the, all that work yourself. So as a, how does it get, you know, I already, already showed you, you guys know how Wikipedia gets done, right? And then DBpedia is an automatic process from that which is a structured version of Wikipedia, right? People update Wikipedia page and that shows up in, uh, structured version shows up in Wikipedia, right? Now, if you think about, uh, and I showed you, uh, you know, like Music Brains, this, this whole community of people that are, you know, updating and keeping up to date. And I, I can, li in that gives you open license, so, you know, something, you know, uh, more or less freely available. Now, in another case, uh, we had an example where uh, I say whoers.com. Here, this site, uh, I think the site is no more now. But um, 
or it may have been acquired or whatever, I don't remember nowadays, but this was an authoritative site that had information about financial markets. Meaning, here is the company, let's say Cisco, that Chambers, John Chambers is CEO, it is in networking uh, area, it also is in this Internet of Things area, it has these products, routing, it has all the, these are the major lines of routing products, it has these executives, it has this customer, major, you know, uh, it has this revenue in the past quarters, all this data, financial data, is something that they aggregate. It didn't come from God, it, they employed people to keep it up to date. But it was there. The problem was solved. The data was there. The, that for, to be, uh, for, that I can use for my knowledge was there. So I don't see the problem that, um, so clearly I think, you know, this is the argument that I gave in my response to Peter Norwich, that look, you're missing out on this, this is there. I had done it actually already, so I knew it. But this is something that they were not quite aware of. They were talking about, can I, you know, automatically create a thing from structure, unstructured text? Well, why do you have to do that? Right? And of course, if the Wikipedia was there at the level we have now, that question would not have come. But it was not there, and of course, uh, Tali was a small company, uh, uh, Tali worked at Magix was a small company, so they, you may not have been aware of that kind of stuff. But, um, so, um, and so you go after, you know, area after area after area, and we were able to find the knowledge. How much time it took for us to design the schema? We had a graphical tool to design the schema. small amount of time and main issue was to really decide what do we need from my application perspective my in this case search application and it is quite possible there is a very you know some highly nuanced um, music concept that is not in my schema and then I don't be able to address it but no no piece of knowledge is complete no human has complete knowledge no collection of humans have complete knowledge so I don't you know there's no point arguing about it I could always have three, four, five. We would have, uh, you know, um, the interesting thing is this tool was operated by non-technical people. I, one of the guy actually that I had hired was a music major. And he would use the design, you know, tool to design the thing. But then uh, sometimes music major may not have had uh, uh, extensive knowledge about financial markets. So um, I, would be, I would consult. We have a VP of, uh, uh, marketing who had financial market experience and so on and so forth. Or we look at the schema of whoers.com. That schema itself tells us all the data. So we just represent it differently, right? We look at 10 different sites in that area, see all kinds of data that is available and design our schema. That's not a big deal. And then we wrote this knowledge extractor to get the data from the site, right? And yes, in some data was free, others you might have had to give them a fee. And usually you give them the fee when you use it in a commercial basis. So those are the things that you have to work out. And yeah, there is work to be done. But every company, you always buy a product for your computer, so you have to license that software product. The same way, you have to license data. Nothing, no, 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 nothing so difficult about it. So we have, you basically, I can see ourselves creating knowledge base of anything. Chemicals, you know, arbitrary chemicals. Uh, biomolecules, um, uh, pharmaceutical drugs, uh, sports of all kinds, uh, you know, um, news, uh, uh, this CIA fact book, which has extensive knowledge about political and geographical information at that time, which had that. So we got data from there. Then DBpedia uh, took over, you know, has more data perhaps than that, so we don't need to use CIA fact books, which is an open information. But that is how we could create a very large knowledge base. And hence, now another thing, there are a lot of things that are happening in creating this knowledge. This is not simple. Last time I gave you an example of um, Hillary Clinton as first lady and then that was uh, 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 you know, replaced by Mrs. Bush as first uh, thing. That's one thing. Uh, Bush, uh, is it uh, Bush the 41st president or 43rd president? Right? So you are, in fact, uh, when the 43rd question was there, frequently there was mention of uh, 41st president. 
So this ambiguity in which you know bush you're talking about is is important, or is it a you know tree bush? You know the vegetation. There are many many possibilities, right? And so we had our own uh, tools. In fact, in one of the presentations, you will see example about disambiguation of Athens. Right? You know there are thirteen Springfields in the United States, and there are you know there are many many Athens. There's Athens, Ohio, but I used to live in Athens, Georgia, and of course I visited Athens, uh, Greece. So which one? So I have described in one, you know, uh, you know, series of slides in one of the presentations. I don't know if you saw that. How we this But there are many techniques. It's not simple problem. There's not a harder problem. More recently, Kurt, you know, Jeremy has come up with something very interesting, where he is using uh, DBpedia Spotlight. Earlier, he tried using freeways to disambiguate the thing. So I had uh, one customer who wanted to um, uh, create a campaign, social media campaign, for um, Turkey. It happens to be the Turkey that is uh, fed by uh, uh, non uh, non bio. Um, it's organic. Kind of organic, kind of, the one that is not fed this uh, uh, bio. Uh, Hormone and other things, kind of stuff, right? So, um, <clears throat> you know, you start looking for Turkey on Twitter, and obviously there'll be a lot of Turkey, as in uh, the country Turkey, right? Yeah. Or the guy who is this Turkey, you know, doesn't understand kind of thing, also, right? Expression. So, there's one method that uh, he uh, put in, in the Twitter system to uh, say, Turkey as described here, this concept or that concept, right? And then that gives some other information necessary to disambiguate later on. So, so um, uh, a series of things that went. In the same way, uh, there are a number of things uh, that you hear about uh, in um, the discussion here. For example, um, uh, did you notice how the um, evol evolution of Google Knowledge Base and Vault uh, has gone? What did they start with? What was the question again? Uh, the e evolution of Google's uh, Knowledge Base. So when they bought MetaWeb, MetaWeb. And they got? 18 million or so facts, right? 12 million facts, right? And they also got uh, the schema as well. I mean, that helped a lot with with the, the knowledge and the world model. Now they actually have an ontology to throw data into and to link data to. So that helped a lot with their creation of, of relationships. Right, right. So so they they they, um, they got the facts, but um, the meta web had a very small hand, hand, handful of people, and. Um, uh, they had already developed this, uh, you know, uh, knowledge base, and uh, so Google saw as uh, saying, yeah, a few people can develop this much this schema. To me, it was no news because I had only 1.5 to 2.5 people managing my entire knowledge base. I, my knowledge base had, uh, at one point of time, 25 different domains. And I could have put more. It's simply a matter of how much, uh, what my customers want. At that point, I was not building just a search engine for everything in the world uh, because you know I had limited amount of money. There was nothing. There was no. I don't think there was any technical reason why you could not have done that. Uh, but I was selling to the customers who had vertical, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, domain-specific sites. So one of my customers was in a music business, who eventually acquired my company. Vocate was in music business. Another customer, I have that in the name of the uh, companies at the bottom of that uh, um, interview thing. Do you remember? With the Red Bank. Yes. So Red Bank was a, um, Red Bank uh, was a media company. So they wanted information about all a kind of um, uh, 
magazines and uh, all the stories they would capture and all the all the people mentioned in the people magazine and you see where i'm going basically the, it's still a lot of entertainment and uh, news and those kind of things that they wanted right they, they, they were not interested in uh, 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 healthcare let me put it this way so i think that have to be in healthcare at that point of time but anything the customer wanted i, I we were able to build and we had millions of facts why very simple just imagine how many facts there would be in um, in the financial services there are roughly i'm giving some very ballpark number but there are roughly 6000 stocks being traded and how many facts there will be for each company very large number of facts and there's all these things about all the statistics of baseball that was on the web and that's in our knowledge base as lot of facts i had so i had millions of facts only one and a half to two and a half people using our tools to get the, those knowledge bases from multiple sites much of the much of the time it would you know design the schema find the sources that can give the information sometimes you have to negotiate license that is the most <laughs> amount of time it might take uh you know then write this thing to ingest all that knowledge disambiguate it these are you know so algorithms for that but that is once done you know much of it can be reused uh, with some tweaks if i were to guess uh, in the google this knowledge vault one of the big thing is about disambiguation you are there is one fundamental difference between what we did and what they have done in the vault i'll come to that uh, remind me i'll come to an interesting observation about what they have done so um, so after starting with this 12 million facts and some schema and also realizing what's also coming from schema.org they started growing and then uh, they uh, started to say they were very very smart engineers there right we all you know. so they started saying ha huh, i could come up with some at aut semi automatic way to get the facts from different sources is it similar the way we did it or not i don't know there's not no reason why what we did before can't be done done now i think that they you know if they wanted uh, if the license permitted and they wanted they can use the wikipedia if um, they wanted they can use um, uh, music brains in fact it's no brainer brainer if they wanted they would use the Uh, movie database from uh, uh, Rotten Tomato or IMDb or there are multiple you know uh, movie base uh, sites that have extensive database or they can buy it from record company all the uh, go to um, you know 21st century fox and say you know there's a database that they have and get the whole dump of that right and put them in the challenging part Uh, when you get data from multiple source there's all kinds of duplication that disambiguation again i come to that that's one of the most challenging part deciding this thing and this thing have slight syntactic variations are they the same or different should i catalog a concept uh, suppose i talk about people right should i uh, you know uh, uh, put tiger woods in uh, golf alone or say he is successful um, uh, you know in business also business in the sense is you know is is make lot of money through advertisement uh, and other uh, uh, agreements is signed so i should put in there also in a marketing personality person who is being used by you know for marketing for advertisement so i put in there right all the celebrities that have been um, uh, used in um, um, uh, you know the data 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 uh, uh, used for advertisement and uh, i have a choice of uh, having tiger woods as one entity and two relationships or two different instances and two different areas right these are the important decisions and uh, everybody in the world has to make that decision there's no way around it so but they built semi automatic tools one interesting thing that has happened uh, that 
where we did not go that point is the thing that um, there have been a number of projects. Um, uh, uh, I think there is a project. Uh, uh, so uh, next month, I'm giving a keynote at IEEE uh, Big Data. Uh, and uh, another person giving keynote is uh, 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 Tom Mitchell, who is a professor um, at CMU. And he is very well known machine learning guy, uh, professor, and uh, and and um, he has uh, built a system whereby um, it continually ingests web pages, and from that tries to extract facts. So there have been number of you know machine learning based techniques that can obtain the facts. There have been work uh, by uh, uh, you know somebody I I, I knew. Um, uh, uh, is, uh, there's a big knowledge base called Yago, um, and that also uses the, the variety of techniques of getting uh, data into a knowledge base from web resources and such. Right? Inherently, when you do that, the quality there is a can you trust that data? Is that good quality data from which I'm doing extraction? That's a hard problem, right? Tali did not address that problem because we validated the sources that we uh, depended upon. Like Wikipedia and Dbpedia, we, uh, we, we saw that was trustworthy enough for us and will you, we said we'll use that. But if you want to do just arbitrary, uh, exact knowledge from arbitrary knowledge sources, then so you have two options. You go to people who are in the business or crowdsource uh, you know, place where people have incentive to keep it up to date <laughs> And depend upon that, or just go to you know some text somewhere and see what new you can learn from that. So some people have done that kind of work. There's a uh, Know It All project at uh, you know and there's you know so CMU, University of Washington, a number of other places have projects of that kind. But fundamental thing about this kind of um, approach is that you would not have a very high level of certainty that that what you extracted is the uh, is a, indeed a fact, 100% uh, reliable. Hence, you start having what? Uncertainty model. How, how sure you are that this is correct, right? So in the idea is that um, the after seeing all this thing and taking, you know, the Using using uh, Freebase or uh, as a bootstrap and schema and schema.org and other things, they said, "Well, we are also going to do this kind of stuff that others had done." Uh, I don't know the techniques are same or not. Doesn't you know? I'm sure they have had students of these you know places that I mentioned also. So they are published literature. So so that allows you to you know, continue to collect more and more knowledge from much wider source. And uh, people like, here, here is the thing. Um, I used to go to some you know, people and say, look, we can build this very large knowledge base. And they focused on um, the fact that my uh, my process for creating ontology was not entirely automatic. You know, some people, you know, it's the stupidity of you know the, the guys not understanding that. Look, I'm doing 95 percent, 98 percent automatic, and only two or five percent thing, and that is well worth it. And the number of the investment I'm making in these people is, you know, non-technical people that can be, you know, anybody who is a web editor can be used there. Um, uh, it doesn't cost much, and now, I, I, you know, um, but when you say, you know, Google is doing vault, knowledge vault, automatically people get gaga over it. In principle, it's not cheap at all, it's a massive amount of resources you have to spend, right? And to know whether some data is correct or not, uh, one of the ways that you have to figure out whether this is a fact or not is you can, if multiple places says the same thing, then you can improve your you know, uh, how much you uh, believe this information is correct. Right? Get more votes, you know, more reliable the information. Right? So, 
So, so, so those are the things that uh, started uh, here, and and that's where. Uh, uh, now what? Now here is the interesting thing. Inherently, um, working with string is the easiest and the most stupid, uh, quote unquote, stupid or easy, you know thing, right? Entity is ha harder, and relationship is significantly harder. Not just harder, not the same level, gap actually much larger. Because you may find, um, uh, let's say I was, once I was working for company, uh, uh, Unisys. Well, there are two relationships I am related, you know, I have between you know, myself and Unisys. I'm an employee of relationship, and I own stock in Unisys, right? So uh, when, uh, which context, which relationship one is involving with another at a particular time is also another challenging issue. So the very related issue in this matter is context, and how do you define context and so on and so forth. There's a lot of literature uh, area of interest for us too, right? So, um, all right, any comments, questions, anything anybody wants to add? Uh, uh, anybody wants to add some interesting thing from all of uh, uh, these? Um, this is a very, um, you know, comprehensive article, right? I hope you guys read that. Comprehensive in some sense. Oh, there's also implicit and explicit, right? <coughs> Very nice, you know, I think these uh, graphs are uh, good. There's a company I advise now and I said, well, maybe you want to call your knowledge base uh, um, ontology, you want to call it knowledge graph. You know, it's a fancy thing, so everybody has their own knowledge graph now. Um, there, there are reasons why uh, we don't uh, necessarily use RDF for when, when, the, when the number of uh, things to be represented are very large. Um, and, and so, you know, last I have talked to um, somebody in Google, indeed they were not using RDF and, and such. And in fact, by and large, the industry is not using RDF. But they would. They are still using links and name links, so that's that's fine. A weaker form of representation. Yet the most important thing, which is the name relationship, is there. All right. Anything else? Anybody wants to add? So then, let us. Discuss this. Let's see what the time is. Okay, we are coming to close the time. So these discussions. Uh, why don't you take all these discussion questions, put it in your uh, thing, and write answers to short. Focus on trying to. Um, uh, I mean, you can write long answers, but um, focus on trying to be. To the point, how do you answer with clarity, with few number of words? Feel free to use link to say, you know, here's more details. I'm using the context this person has used, or so on and so forth. But put that in. Oh, and let us have a discussion either in class, you tell me, or one-on-one uh, -on -one if you think um, any one of those things are not clear. So we have an option if uh, enough of you say that you want to discuss have the discussion in class to discuss this fine. Otherwise, um, you, you know, you guys will discuss it in your um, uh, class page, right? Just like you had in the first class, you had some questions. So we'll take these as questions, discuss them. Some of these are just, I think, um, reminding uh, something that we already discussed. So I think, right? 